Let me begin, though, with a few definitions. A receptor is a molecule on or in a cell with which a drug or hormone or a neurotransmitter initially interacts. A ligand is a compound which interacts specifically with the receptor. There are two main types of ligands, agonists, which stimulate the receptor, and antagonists, which bind to but do not stimulate the receptor. They're sometimes known as blockers. This little animation, which you see here, depicts an agonist interacting with a receptor and changing its conformation or shape so that it can signal. Two examples of agonists which work through this particular family of seven transmembrane receptors are adrenaline and morphine. In this animation, an antagonist is shown uh, in the form of this capsule binding to the receptor but not changing its shape and thereby not leading to biological signals. Several common examples of blockers or antagonists that you may be aware of are beta blockers, which is simply shorthand for beta adrenergic receptor blockers or antagonists, antihistamines, or angiotensin receptor blockers, also known by the shorthand ARBs. Now today, I'm going to be talking about this remarkable family of seven transmembrane receptors, or G-protein coupled receptors, as they're also known. The name seven transmembrane receptor, of course, derives from their highly conserved structure, which we'll talk more about in just a few moments, which fe features a polypeptide chain which crisscrosses the plasma membrane seven times. This remarkable family of receptors contains about 800 to 1,000 members and regulates virtually all known physiological processes in mammals and humans. In particular, many of the sensory receptors, such as those that mediate taste and smell and vision, are members of this family, as are so many drug receptors, such as those for beta blockers, uh, antihistamines, uh, glucagon, to mention just a few. But what makes this family of receptors even more important is that their central place in modern of pharmacotherapy of human illnesses. It's said that somewhere north of 50% uh, of all prescription drugs sold in the world today are drugs which function as agonists or antagonists for various members of this family of receptors. Let's take a moment to review some of the basic characteristics of how the seven transmembrane or G-protein coupled receptors function. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this information, but I thought it would be a good idea to make sure that everybody is on the same page. So when one of these receptors, for example, the so-called beta adrenergic receptor for adrenaline or noradrenaline, is stimulated by its agonist, it changes shape or conformation. This allows it to interact with a heterotrimeric G-protein, in this case, GS. These proteins, of course, are referred to as heterotrimeric because they consist of three distinct subunits, in this case, termed alpha, beta, and gamma. The interaction of the agonist-activated receptor with the G protein is thought to dissociate it, or at least loosen the association of the alpha subunit from the beta-gamma subunit, dimer. Then, both the alpha subunit and the beta-gamma subunits can independently function by activating various downstream signaling systems. Of course, the classical pathway is for activation of second messenger generating enzymes, such as adenylate cyclase or phospholipase C, which would generate uh, cyclic AMP or diacylglycerol. 